Hello everyone, I'm working on the project entitled Improving Scilab's XCOS user interface along with my team members Lakshmi Prasanna and Srinivas Barede. So, to let me briefly introduce you to what about XCOS. XCOS is a tool of Scilab which is used for simulating the models. The main aim of our project was to improve the user interface of XCOS uh, and we attempted to shift the uh, shift the people's, uh, because LabVIEW is a proprietary software and not every organization can afford it. So the features we implemented include providing a new TK skill block with additional properties, implementing a runtime auto skill feature for the XCOS graphics, and uh, search block tool, recently used blocks tools, and all we all implemented, they will briefly introduce you. Uh, now TK skill block. So TK skill block is an input slider block, and it is important because this block is the only block present in XCOS which allows you user to change the input during the runtime. So now, what happens in the current implementation of Scilab, which is available, when we, when we use more than one TK skill block inside of a diagram, so there is no feature so that we can differentiate between the various TK blocks which are appearing. As you can see, there is only one label which is appearing TK source only. So user can't differentiate. Also, there is no feature available like to give the customized block name as per the user, which is very essential when we are drawing the good diagrams. So what we did, we completely implemented a new block for this purpose. So you can see though we have implemented a field where we can give the label field and give the name. And by default, even if we don't give the name, they are differentiating it automatically. So the next feature we implemented was the runtime auto scale feature, as I mentioned previously. So presently what happens is that if user wants to uh, plot any graph, uh, he, should, uh, auto, he should manually specify the correct ranges of the graph. If he didn't specify the correct ranges and the value to be plotted exceeds the value, so exceeds the range of the graph, so as you can see, the graph is not visible to the user. So for all this requires the coding in the Scilab programming language C, C++, and also debugging the code in the Java. So as you can see in the, this slide, so auto skill feature has been implemented and, uh, uh, the, and the, this graph will automatically adjust this range. If the value to be plotted exceeds the range, whatever it is up to the range of long long int or whatever variable you are using. It takes a range. Huh? This graph yeah. also takes a range. No, even if you don't give, there is a default range. So if the value to be plotted exceeds, it will automatically adjust. But if it doesn't exist, it will not adjust. It doesn't exist, what's the meaning? If it doesn't exceed, huh. it will not adjust. If it doesn't exceed, that's good. It is already a, a very look. If I give 0 to 100 and all my values are between 0 to 5, hmm. it will give me 0 to 10. No, it will not. Why should it? Because it's auto scale. Yeah. Even 0 to 100, all my value will be to 0 to 5, I'll get something stupid line like this. So it should be scaled to 0 to 10, that is auto scale. Okay. Okay, yeah. So our feature was to implement uh, the, if it exceeds, then it, it will adjust. Wow. Okay. And who gives you those uh, 0, 10, 20, 30? What, sir? Those scales. Dash dash lines. Huh. Who gives you those intervals? You are talking 0, 10, 20, 30. They, they X axis ka jo interval mein tumne dash. Huh. 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 So who generates that? By default, it is 10, and if the user wants to change, he can change. User doesn't want to change. You are auto scale. So if you tell me, if you minus 1, 100, 100, hmm. it generates that? Yes. No. It will adjust to the like max value which you are specifying minus the min value of the graph I divided by normalization. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. Yes. I want a graph of zero to ten. Yeah. Oh, my name, my name, my name, my zero to hundred. Zero to my name, 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 my it will plot those values. What will be the scale? Who generates the statistic points? If you specify it is 0 to itna, then I it will be itna. Then it will be itna. Despite 0 to 1 million. 
Yeah, then it will be zero to one million only. With one lakh as peak point. Now, now, what does software do? Range, if you have specified, then that range will be displayed and the value to be plotted will also be displayed. Hey, Baba, I have given you 0 to 1 lakh. I am also saying the same that. I have given you 0 to 10 lakh. Yeah. I have given you my peak should be at 1 lakh. This is my specification, correct? Now I have given you exceeding minus 200 to 200. Is exceeding correct on the downside? Hmm. Yeah. What graph will show is my question. Ha, it will exceed to the downside also. Minus 200 will be... Upside will be 1 million. Huh? Upside will be 10 lakhs. Upside, huh? it will... Upside will be 10 lakhs. Okay. Upside will be 10 lakhs. Yeah. What yeah? Yes, it will. That is not auto scale. You done nothing. Sir, you that said... Auto scale. You said 0 to 10 lakhs. I have been doing this for 30 years you back. I have done this. Okay. One million, what he has before. Okay. See, this software will automatically make it 200 to plus 200. No, he does not do it. One lakh, one lakh. Minus 200 to plus 200. Yes, it will show minus 200 value. Yes, yes, oh. Next, next. No, I can show you. I can show. I have a demo. Next, next. It will show the value of minus 200. It will show the value, but if you're going to scale the total maximum to minimum scale, what does it Max will remain 10. Mm, what he's but minimum will but minimum will go down. Okay. So now I would like to invite Prasanna to carry forward. Hello everyone. Moving on to the next feature. Uh, in the current version of Palette Browser, if the user want to select any block, uh, he must know the palette name of that block to which that block belongs. So if he doesn't know the uh, palette name, then he has to go through all the palettes to search for his block. So what we have done is we have implemented a search block where the user can mention the block name without worrying about the palette name. So it will show the results of that search keyword. Yeah, the next feature is recently used blocks. The palette browser of current version is not having this feature. and. This is a problem when the user want to reuse any block that he has just used. So we have added a new palette named recently used blocks and we, here we are adding the blocks that are used by the user every time. The palette browser of present version is not incorporated with any key events. I mean we cannot navigate through the blocks using navigation keys and we cannot select the multiple blocks using control and shift keys. So we have given these features to the palette browser and we have also enabled drag and drop feature for multiple blocks. Yeah, now I'll hand over the session to Srinivas. He'll continue with the features. Hello everyone. Uh, in Xcos, if you see, if on simulating a diagram, it will open multiple windows based on the number of input and output blocks which present the, present in that diagram. So when the number of input and output blocks are increased, the number of windows also will be increased. So this may leads to cluttering of windows. So as you can see in this picture, there are four input input block input windows and three output windows. So now user wants to go through access any window, he has to go through all windows. So this may this makes user using this uh, uh, software feels unfriendly. So we are added all the all the windows to a single window in our version. So challenges we are faced while doing our work while while working with our project we fa we unable we faced many difficulties. One of those is debugging in Ecl Eclipse. First, at the starting, okay. okay. Thanks. Dem Thanks.